Welcome to the Confederate Air Force World War II Air Power Demonstration. The aircraft you will see performing here this afternoon are those machines which defended our nation in the greatest conflict in the history of the world from 1941 to 1945. They represent an important part of our American military aviation heritage. The men and women of the Confederate Air Force present this demonstration to remind us of a tragic time in the history of our nation and the world. When the war began in 1941, America was a fifth-rate air power. But in just four short years, we overcame and grew to become the first-rate air power in the world. The technology and industrial might of our nation, along with the courage, ability, and sacrifices of all Americans, made this possible. We who experienced those years should not forget them, and the younger generation of Americans with us today should be made aware of the great accomplishments of this nation during that period. We must also be reminded that this nation and the rest of the free world must never be caught asleep again as we were on December 7th of 1941, and that we must always be relatively strong as we were in 1945 when these machines were the first line combat aircraft. It is now 7.30 at KBOR Honolulu, Hawaii. The temperature is 78 degrees. Forecast for Honolulu and surrounding islands is clear skies and warm temperatures all afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, close your eyes for 10 seconds. You've gone back in time over three and a half decades. It is 7.55 a.m. on a peaceful Sunday morning at a place called Pearl Harbor in the beautiful and peaceful Hawaiian Islands. 183 bombers and fighters of Japan's first air fleet, the Imperial Japanese Navy, approach America's greatest Pacific naval base with most of its fleet anchored peacefully within the confines of the harbor. So confident are the attackers that as they approach Pearl Harbor, the coded signal indicating a totally successful raid is flashed back to the carrier task force before the first bomb falls. Tora, 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 Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. A single radar set had spotted the incoming raiders but mistook them for a flight of B-17s due from the mainland. The B-17s arrive and like America itself, find themselves in the middle of a war which had not yet been declared. Ladies and gentlemen, you are there. This is December 7th, 1941. Torah, Torah, Torah. our reenactment of the Tora 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 attack on Pearl Harbor is performed and executed hundreds of times a year by members of the Gulf Coast Squadron of the Confederate Air Force. They're flying the Japanese Zero replicas that performed in the movie Tora 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 as they taxi by give them a nice wave. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, taking off the trainers of the Confederate Air Force. The CAF trainer aircraft that you see flying today are identical to the same aircraft used to train pilots during World War II. Aviation cadets began with 65 hours in primary trainers like the PT-22 Ryan, the PT-26, and the PT-17 Stearman. Next, they had 45 hours in basic trainers like the PT-13, 14, and PT-15. And then finally, 70 hours of extensive flying in the advanced trainer, the AT-6 Texan, just like the T-6s of the Confederate Air Force VT-1 trainer squadron that are flying today. 
Experienced combat pilots came home from the fronts to teach firsthand the techniques of combat flying. Solo flying, night flying, formation flying, air-to-air -air combat maneuvering. The pilot training program lasted 10 months with 200 hours of flying time. Three out of five aviation cadets passed with the right and the honor to wear the wings of the United States Army Air Force, Navy, or Marines. It's over the top, John Hess from College Station, Texas, as he does a series of aerobatic maneuvers. Before the headlines began to speak of advances and victories, we had precious little to cheer about. Our casualty lists represented the price we paid for failure to provide for an adequate defense, for our unbelievable failure to heed the death and destruction involving half the world. But the morale of the American people was occasionally buoyed by a few individual exploits of courage and ability, which pointed to the ultimate victory ahead. One of these occurred on April 18, 1942, when a middle-aged lieutenant colonel named Jimmy Doolittle led 16 B-25 on the impossible mission, a raid on Tokyo, or Japan, by army bombers launched from the deck of the carrier, the USS Hornet. Navy fighters and uh, bombers and torpedo planes are in the air, ladies and gentlemen, reminding us of May 7th and 8th of 1942, the Battle of Coral Sea, the first battle in history fought entirely in the air. June 4th of 1942, Admiral Yamamoto had won approval for the Midway invasion operation, and he was correct. The Midway battle was the turning point of the Pacific War, but not in the way he planned. If the Doolittle raid was the impossible mission, then Midway was the impossible victory. Ladies and gentlemen, let's listen now to the actual battle sounds of the Battle of Midway. and they began the greatest strategic bombing campaign in history, the RAF by night, the U.S. Air Force by day. Round-the-clock bombing and the hammering of German industrial cities. The ball-bearing plants of Schweinfurt, the ME-109 factories at Riesenberg, rail yards at Creole, France, and V-2 rocket sites, Cologne, Hamburg, and Berlin. And hell rained down on Hitler. the greatest single military operation in the history of warfare, the Normandy Invasion, Operation Overlord. forces out here right in front of the speaker's platform. An enemy tank has been sighted. Well, I understand the P-63's got its sights on it. Watch now, ladies and gentlemen, from the right, the P-63 lines up with the enemy tank. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may we please have complete silence as we salute the airmen who have given their lives in the defense of the freedoms of our country. <laughs> 